Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to this lesson where we are going to discuss uh, section 3.4 in chapter 3 of the research proposal. Remember we said chapter 3 of the research proposal is titled research methodology and it has 10 subsection. So in our previous lesson we have discussed section 3.3 which is research design and we have said research design refers to the plan that the researcher comes up with so that they can explain how they will collect, how they will uh, analyze and how they will interpret data so that they can answer research questions and test hypotheses. So in this lesson we are going to discuss uh, section 3.4 in chapter 3 of the research proposal and this section is titled target population. At the end of this lesson you should explain the meaning of target population differentiate between target and accessible population and then explain the requirements of this section which is 3.4. So from these sections of chapter 3 of the research proposal we have already discussed a research paradigm lesson 61, research design our just added lesson and now we are discussing target population. So questions on the population, unit of analysis and unit of observation on which the research will focus on must be made early while planning research. And when we say when we are planning research, it means as you think through your research problem, you must be asking yourself, now that I want to investigate this problem, who will answer to my research questions? Whom will I target? And these people that you target, you ask yourself, will I be dealing with everyone or will I be dealing with a subset of this group? And those are questions dealing with target population and dealing with sampling and sam sample size and sampling techniques that we are going to discuss in our next lesson. So we need to remind ourselves what is a population? When we talk about target population, what is a population? So this refers to the entire. And when we say entire, we are saying it is all people and events or things of interest that the researcher wishes to investigate. Now, why does the researcher wish to investigate this group? It is because they have the characteristic that the researcher wishes to study. And this characteristic, it means it will help him or her answer the research problem. For instance, if I wanted to investigate academic performance, it is unlikely that I will go to the business people. My main focus or my population will mainly be students and maybe the, the lecturers or the teachers. Why? Because they have the characteristic that I would want to study since they are best suited to answer to the questions on academic performance. Now, note that we are adding events or things so that we can take care of other disciplines of research which are not necessarily social science research. For social science research, we mainly deal with people. Each person or each individual in a population is called an element. And the numerical value or measure of a characteristic of the population is called a parameter. 
and population is abbreviated as capital N and we shall see when we get to the sample that the sample is abbreviated as small n. Now there are two terms that confuse mainly students and they need to be clear of the two because it determines how they are going to make conclusions. Unit of analysis and unit of observation. When you talk about a unit of analysis, this is the primary unit that will be the subject of statistical analysis. In other words, this is the subject which you want to draw scientific inferences about. It is the focus of the study because you want to say something about it at the end of the, your study. This is what you will be reporting about. And this can be a person, it can be an organization, it can be a group, it can be a project, anything that you are focusing on so that as you write your document then the reader knows that the focus of this study is this project the focus of the study is this person the focus of this study is an organization that is the unit of analysis the unit of observation is an object about which information is collected it is the object and when we say the object it can also refer to a person that you will observe, you will measure or collect while trying to learn something about your unit of analysis. Now note and we are going to look at an example in some studies the unit of observation may be the same as the unit of analysis. Let's give an example. If for example you want to describe a project at the end of your study you want to focus or to draw inferences regarding a project you definitely know that you cannot ask pro at the project in this case is an object the questions so though your unit of analysis is the project your unit of observation will be there could be the workers in that project that what that means the project team it may be the beneficiaries of that project. So that becomes your unit of observation so that you, they can help you describe the unit of analysis. We have two types of population. There are various types but let's look at the two uh, uh, key ones in our section 3.3. We have target and we have accessible population. Target population uh, those individuals that have the characteristics that are of interest to the researcher and to whom you wish or you plan to generalize your findings. So they have the specific attributes of interest and they are relevant to you. So remember we said the target, the, the population is what the researcher wishes to study. But then they now look at which are more relevant and they have the specific attributes that I want to study. And this forms the target population. For instance, if you were to look at the people working in, uh, in a health facility or in a hospital, that is the population. So you are looking at the doctors, the nurses, the, 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 the workers, the technical staff, you are looking at uh, the security people, you are looking at the hospitality people, that is the population in a hospital. But as a researcher, you may want to study only the health workers. Now that becomes the target population because they have the specific attributes that you'd want to study and once you do your study, you will generalize your findings to all health workers, maybe across a particular county. We also have accessible or study population. This is the portion of the population to which the researcher has reasonable access and it is mainly a subset of the target population. And this access may be limited to a region, a state, a city, an institution, etc. So though we wanted to study the health workers in a particular county, the population that is accessible to us may be only those in level four. And even when we say accessible, it does, it does not mean convenient. 
it means they are the best to answer the research problem. So when we look at the research problem that we have, instead of dealing with all the health workers from level one to level six, then we can limit ourselves probably to level four, and that becomes the accessible population. Now remember, accessible population is from, uh, that is the population from which we draw our sample from, and it is representative of the target population. Note, and this note is very key because this is the assumption that we make as we write our, our research proposal. If the target population is small enough, and when we say small, as researchers we need to define the small, which we did as we discussed sampling in our lessons. So if the target population is small enough to select participants from and all its members are both willing and available to participate in the study, then there is no need of specifying the accessible population. And this is the assumption that we make when we are writing section 3.4. We call it target population because we always make an assumption that we have a target population that is accessible and we are able to select the participants from it who will help us answer the research question. So that is why in our proposal, we don't write the accessible, we write target population. So what are you required to have as you write section 3.4? The first thing is to specify all the participants in the study to whom the results will be generalized to. And when we say all, based on your problem, if we are dealing with academic performance of students, are you dealing with the students themselves, the lecturers, the parents, the education officers, the monitoring and evaluation officers? This constitutes the all participants and they are informed by the problem. So target population must specify the number of the persons who comprises the population and it must be the actual number of participants as per the various categories in the study. So when you are doing your study, you must know the actual number. Is it how many students, how many lecturers, how many parents, how many education officers, how many M and E officers, etc. This number is not hypothetical, but it is the actual number of participants as per the records based on the study that you are working on. And this brings us to the end of our lesson. We have said that a target population is that population that has the attributes of interest to the researcher and it is also relevant. So we are moving to section 3.5 which is sample size and sampling techniques in our next lesson. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Please like and share this video with your classmates and any question you have regarding our today's lesson, please put it in the comment section.